We've been talking about physical violence, but a lot of the violence that happens in real life is actually more psychological. For example, ostracism is where people ignore you. They pretend you're not there. Here's a case study from an Australian woman in her early 20s. In high school, the other students thought I was weird and never spoke to me. I tell you, in all honesty, that at one stage, they refused to speak to me for 153 days, not a word at all. That was a very low point for me in my life, and on the 153rd day, I swallowed 29 Valium pills. My brother found me and called an ambulance. When I returned to school, the kids had heard the whole story, and for a few days, they were falling over themselves to be my friend. Sadly, it didn't last. They stopped talking to me again, and I was devastated. I stopped talking myself then. I figured that it was useless to have a voice if no one listened. This is a terrible story. Now, obviously, this is a very extreme example of ostracism. We can probably all remember a time when we've received the silent treatment from somebody. You know how awful that feels. Kipling Williams developed a very simple paradigm that showed the effect of social ostracism. Williams invited three people into the lab. One of them was a true participant and the other two were actors or confederates. When the one participant and the two confederates entered the lab, three chairs were set up in a triangular formation approximately 150 centimetres apart from one another. The confederates made sure that they quickly occupied the two chairs along the observation window, forcing the participant to sit in the remaining chair that was in clear view of the camera that recorded their actions and was facing the observation mirror where the experimenters observed them. One of the confederates sat next to a crate that had child play behaviour written on it. It was filled with toys, including a ball. The experimenter then gave them a questionnaire to complete that asked them about their class rank, age and what they were studying. This questionnaire was given to prevent the participants from starting a conversation with the confederates. The experimenter instructed the three to complete the questionnaire and then wait quietly until the experimenter returned. The experimenter indicated that this was important for the next phase of the experiment. They then left the room and observed the participant behind the observation window. After completing the initial questionnaire, one of the confederates opened up the crate and made it look like he or she had just found a ball in the crate and started to play with it. To start off with, the confederate just bounced the ball by themselves. After a bit, they bounced and tossed the ball to the other confederate. After that, the confederates included the participant in the play by bouncing and tossing the ball to them. The three of them then played this ball tossing game for approximately one minute. The procedure for those in the ostracised group was the same as for those in the inclusion group, except that for those in the ostracised group, after the minute of play, the confederates then started to only toss the ball between each other for around four minutes. The confederates then tossed the ball back into the crate when they heard the footsteps of the experimenter walking back into the room. The experimenter then returned back to the lab and gave the participants another questionnaire to complete that asked them about their past experience of someone giving them the silent treatment. 